First of all, I delete the default cube, the camera and the light source from the scene and after that I copy the ring from another Blender file and paste it into my scene. I downloaded my ring from turbosquid.com, there are plenty of different models and also you can search for free models, just type the ring in the search bar and then choose free option on the top menu. I switch to the front view by hitting 1 on the numpad and then I slightly move the rig up using GZ combination on the keyboard, G to move the object and Z to move it only along the Z axis. Shift A mesh and choose cube to bring in the cube to the scene and then I enter into edit mode by hitting type on the keyboard and then S to make it smaller. You may find it more comfortable to work into wireframe mode, so for that hit Z on the keyboard and choose wireframe or simply hit Z and 4 on the keyboard. So continue to scale your cube until you're satisfied with the dimensions of that. Switch to the side view by hitting 3 on the numpad and then you can adjust the position of the ring uh, to make it kind of to, to make it looks like it's laying on the cube. If your model has different parts, uh, like in my case, for example, I have the silver, silver part, the actual uh, the ring, and then the diamond. So make sure that you select both objects when you do any manipulations uh, with position or scale of your ring. As you probably figure out, the idea here is to create uh, some sort of pedestal for the ring and uh, it shouldn't be really small or big, so just slightly bigger than the actual ring. I think that shape works really well in this case. You can also add bevels uh, to the edges to create some sort of uh, radius edges actually and it will look like more circular shape, but it's up to you. I also slightly rotated the ring uh, around the z-axis, so I just choose the diamond and the ring itself and then I hit G, Z to rotate it around the Z. Make sure that auto smooth option is turned on as uh, we are not gonna add any subdivision surface modifiers, instead I'm gonna add a bevel modifier to it. I set three segments and then I choose really really small amount as I need really tiny bevels on the edges. Also we have to create some sort of ground underneath the ring and the pedestal. So I bring in a simple plane, shift A plane and I move it slightly lower. I use a pretty cool add-on called Blender Kit. Uh, you can try it, even in free version they have a lot of different materials and objects you can use. And it's pretty easy to use actually, you just type the material you want to find for instance and then you simply drag and drop it uh, to your model. In this case I found a pretty good looking marble material and I put it on the pedestal, but as you can see I have to adjust the textures. And for that I split my screen in half and then I go to shader editor and I have to add mapping node and texture coordinate nodes to be able to control the position of each map. I connect vector output and vector inputs on every single image texture node. Also don't forget to switch from flat to box projection for the very first node. And also make sure that you use generated output in the texture coordinate node. Also I have to add some material for the ground and in this case I search for concrete material and as soon as I found the suitable one I simply drag and drop it as I did it before. Obviously I have to adjust the texture and for that I use generated output as I did for the pedestal and also I increase scale uh, to around 70 to adjust it according to the rest objects in the scene. Make sure that you use the same value in all fields x, y and z otherwise your texture will be stretched. You can close the left window by clicking in between of them, right click and choose join areas. Shift A and choose camera to add the actual camera to the scene. You can set the desired angle and height of the camera but you're not actually in the camera mode. So after that you have to hit Ctrl Alt 0 on an M-pad and you will actually snap the camera to the current view. I hope that makes sense and lately you can switch to camera properties and in this case I adjusted focal length to 150 millimeters. Also you can turn on camera to view option in the view menu on the right. Also use 0 on an M-pad to quickly switch between viewport and camera mode. 
According to my idea, I need some leaves in the scene. And also need a texture for that, obviously. And I found it on 3dtextures.me website. I'll put the link in the description. You have to download the pack and unzip it somewhere. We need to create a geometry where we will put our textures. So for that, I bring in a plane to the scene, Shift A, Mesh, Plane, and S to scale it. This is just an approximate size as you can always scale it a bit later. So also I add this plane to a new collection and call it Props. You can exclude the default collection from the viewport to avoid the mess. I go to Shader Editor and create a new material, I call it Leaf. And now I can start adding uh, the textures one by one and I start with albedo texture. I just drag and drop it uh, to the viewport and then connect it to base color input on principal BSDF shader. As you can see on the right the texture is rarely projected and that's mainly because I haven't unwrapped this plane at all. So you just have to select all the vertices, tap to enter the edit mode and then hit U and choose project from view. Then you can hit R, Z, 90 to rotate it along the Z axis, 90 degrees. Then I bring in transparent texture and connect it to a transmission input. Then I add a normal map and connect it to normal input. And also, of course, don't forget to add a normal map node in between of them and also switch to non-color space. Also, you can add a specular texture and connect it to specular input in principle to BSDF shader. Finally, we have to add the mask, black and white mask, uh, to make only leaf itself visible as we don't need uh, any background. If you'd switch uh, into the rendered mode on the top, uh, you would see a similar picture in your viewport and that means that everything is connected correctly. And also we can group those uh, those textures you just have to select them and hit ctrl G on the keyboard and this action will create a group and you can hit tab to exit that group. Choose the plane on the right, hit tab to enter the edit mode and then K to activate the knife tool and uh, simply cut out the shape similar to the original shape of the leaf. As soon as you're done you just have to select the central face or vertices and hit Shift D to duplicate the selection and then delete the rest unnecessary vertices. You can make this geometry a bit more detailed and for that activate knife tool again, K on the keyboard and then just connect a few vertices here and there as you can see on the screen and this will help uh, to bend this leaf a bit. You can add some curvature to the leaf and for that just select a vertex and GZ to move it up and select another one and move it this way as well and uh, yeah you can actually add uh, as many faces and vertices as you want but the idea here is to have as few vertices as possible because it definitely helps uh, to save resources of your PC or Mac. And we are moving forward and I just select this leaf and position it the way you see it and as closer you put it in front of camera the more it will be out of focus and You'll see just in a few seconds what I mean. If you want to create the shallow depth of field, uh, for that you have to go to camera properties and then choose depth of field checkbox. Then you can choose focus object and in this case it would be diamond. So I had some issues with that feature in material preview mode, regardless f stops I choose. If you know why that happened, please let me know in the comments. And as you can see in rendered mode it looks pretty good as it should. And uh, the leaf is out of focus as I want it to be. You can use Alt-D combination to create an instance and create as many leaves as you want. Keep in mind that all instances will be affected if you change the size of the original geometry. And if you don't want to do that, just create the copy of the leaf and use Shift-D for that instead of Alt-D. And now it's time to set up the proper lighting for the scene and for that I go to hdriheaven.com and I search for sunset and actually I found this pretty awesome Venice sunset. Uh, 8K in this case would be enough. To add this HDRI to the scene you have to go to shader editor and then switch from object to world. Then add a new environment texture and open downloaded HDRI. 
obviously it's not necessary to use the exact image I use in this tutorial uh, just make sure that you choose images with uh, soft lighting make sure that the Wrangler add-on is activated and then choose the environment node and hit ctrl T to bring in mapping and texture coordinate nodes and after that you'll be able to rotate your HDRI and for example uh, to rotate it around the z-axis just uh, type some values there and you'll see in the viewport uh, how HDRI changes its position and as you can see, uh, a simple rotation allows you to create a completely different mood for the render. You can also try to tilt the HDRI along the Y or X axis as well. To add a bit more depth to the render, I want to bring in uh, some leaves in the background as well and they will be out of focus also. So for that I just simply duplicate leaf uh, from the foreground and just move it somewhere behind the ring. So basically I'm doing pretty same job uh, I did for the leaves uh, that positioned in front of the camera. I use basic instruments like a move tool and rotation tool. So uh, the main um, kind of the main issue is that you have to find the suitable place for those leaves behind and uh, it could be sometimes it could be tricky uh, to position it the way you want it. I want to bring in more definition to the diamond and to the both sides of the ring and I will show you a couple of tricks how you can improve those areas. I add a new plane to the scene and then scale it along the Y axis and rotate it along the X and along the Z axis. So basically I have uh, some sort of narrow plane now and I put it somewhere on the left. Then I add a simple material to it. Uh, it will be uh, just a black color uh, with maximum roughness value. And now if I switch back uh, to the rendered mode, you would notice that we see a black reflection on the left part of the ring. And that's exactly what I want. And we can control the thickness of that reflection by simply moving that plane on the left. So you just have to select it and hit GZ to move it higher or lower. And of course we can do the same thing for the other side of the ring. We just have to simply duplicate the plane and position it somewhere on the right where the ring will pick up the reflection from that black stripe. So with that approach you can easily control uh, reflections on highly reflective stuff like uh, jewelry ring for in this case and uh, even we have uh, just uh, HDRI you can create uh, additional definition for silver parts by using those planes. By the way, you can make them invisible by going to Object Properties tab and go down to Visibility menu and turn off Camera checkbox. Also, you can try to turn off the Shadow checkbox uh, as you don't want to have unnecessary shadows underneath uh, those planes. Add the planes to a new collection, this way you will be able to quickly turn them on and off. From this point, I simply continue to tweak uh, the leaves in front of the camera uh, until I get the result. I like. The final render came out pretty well in my opinion, but still I wanna adjust a few things. I want to create a few additional renders of the silver part of the ring and of the diamond. So if you wanna know how to do that in details, please check out the suggested video above. To create a more variable light pattern inside the diamond, I simply rotate HDRI around the Z, so this way you can get different uh, reflections and refractions inside uh, inside such parts. This technique also works great for the glass or uh, some other uh, transparent or semi-transparent stuff. The post-production process uh, is actually pretty straightforward. I just combine uh, different exposures, uh, for example, the diamond and uh, top part of the ring. So I put them on different layers and then mask uh, other parts if needed. So also I used pretty standard adjustment instruments like curves, color balance tool uh, to slightly adjust the white balance of the shot. And that's pretty much it I guess. So yeah, thank you very much for watching and download this PSD file in my Facebook group. The link is in the description and uh, yeah, I'll see you in the next video.